Okay, so today at the abortion mill, um, I wasn't out there very long. Um, one of the members of our abolitionist society, Greg Denells, was out there preaching and pleading and out there all morning, um, just really holding it down by himself, calling out to people. And um, when I got there, um, he kind of told me about a family that had gone in. I, I pointed out this this big truck, this big fancy truck, all souped up with all this, uh, I mean, I wouldn't even know what to call it, fancy lights and grills and stuff. And and uh, he said, well, yeah, that was a that was a grandfather, a mother, and then the daughter, and then a boyfriend came in a separate car, and they all went in, and, and I preached at them, and none of them talked to me and all that kind of stuff. Well, while I was there, this, uh, this older gentleman comes out, older, I mean, not old, like 55 or something, uh, but kind of like a hip-looking guy, kind of look, you know, like Craig Groeschel-looking guy, you know, kind of hip-looking dude. He uh, comes out to smoke a cigarette, and uh, you know we're calling out to him and saying you know you know just you, if your daughter hasn't done it you know grandfather you need to go back in there and save your child there's a better way all that kind of thing and uh, you know he smokes a cigarette for a while and um, we start talking about sin and everything well he comes over um, like he's been sitting and thinking and um, considering not considering what we're saying but you know I can tell it's messing with him a little bit so he like Come, he walks over to us and he gets out his wallet and he shows me a card and he's like, I'm a doctor. Now he didn't really show me the card long enough. I mean, it was kind of like a Doctor Who thing, like look and then put it away. Um, but he's like, I'm a doctor and my daughter um, has to be here because she's going to die. He says that. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm, you know, a historian of science and I can kind of, and I know some prenatal stuff, so I can kind of follow what you're going to say. So what is, what's her uh, situation? What's going on with the baby? What's going on with the development or the pregnancy? And um, he said, he, I, and I say, so what, what's the name of the situation? Like, and of course he can't tell me. He goes, he just kind of like fumbles around a little bit and he says, it's in her tube. And I said, well, how far along is she? And he goes, six weeks. I'm like, six weeks, it's in her tube, and you're you're telling me that doctors are telling you the only thing you can do at this point is to abort the baby. And he says, we've driven to Austin and to Temple, and they sent us here. Which, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out if this guy's telling me the truth. I don't know who goes and gets an ultrasound or uh, something done to figure out what's going on at six weeks. You know, I mean, most people don't even have a clue that they're pregnant um, until like four weeks, but maybe two weeks if they're just being really curious. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these things like, okay, what's going on? And uh, so he's trying to, and, I'm, and so I tried to tell him, you know, maybe something about, um, you know, numerous cases of this have, have come to full term and, why just kill the baby now and try to try to open up that conversation with him about whether or not abortion is actually the only viable option or whether this baby, even if this baby is in the fallopian tube and there are cysts or anything like that, if there's something else that can be done. And I want to tell him that there's, there's plenty that can be done. But then his wife comes out and she sees that he's talking to us and she starts flipping out and cussing us out and yelling at him to, to keep him from talking to us and I'm like well if they're there because they think it's a medically necessary abortion at six weeks and he's telling me the truth why is she so angry why is she flipping us off why does he look stunned like oh crap and then kind of go away from us and then I just call him out I was like are you lying to me what are you talking about you know if you're a doctor you know let's heal her not kill her or kill her child and and all this kind of stuff. They go, they sit in their car, and they talk for a while, they smoke some cigarettes, and then they they get they get back their wits or something, and then they walk back in the whole time, Greg and I, saying, you know, there's another way. Now I make this video because I'm trying to think about this. 
I don't know whether there's any truth whatsoever to there being some kind of a problem. I do know that a problem at, 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 during the sixth week of development um, is not one wherein you can say for certain that the baby's gonna die or the mother's gonna die or anything like that. Greg, who saw her go in, she was young, she wasn't showing, um, you know, she didn't look unhealthy, uh, all that kind of stuff. I don't know, but here's the deal. In the culture, when we're fighting abortion, and uh, when pro-lifers are, are trying to pass legislative acts and all this kind of stuff, and they are constantly saying, except for in the case of the mother, except for in the case of the life of the mother, except for in the case of the life of the mother, or except for in the case of rape or incest, rape and that sort of thing, what happens is, is the people who get pregnant and decide that they want to abort their babies go, I know what I'll tell those sidewalk counselors or those those abolitionists or those preachers or any Christians who talk to me about this. I'll say, I had to do it because the life of the mother. And uh, even if it's not, if it's totally a lie, we are talking about people who, when being pregnant, would rather kill their baby than keep their baby. They're going to lie. Everything about that day. When they, when they ate their breakfast was a lie because they're pretending like things are normal, but they're killing their child. They're lying. So what I'm, what I'm suggesting, something I learned, is that the, what, the way that we make appeals outside of the clinics, outside of the abortion mills, what we do in our, in our internet memes and in our campaigns and our videos and our debates and our books and our legislative acts and all that kind of stuff affects what goes on in the lives of individuals who are murdering their children. And it does so because in the case that this was true, that this young woman had some cysts, and this young woman's uh, child um, implanted higher up or in the fallopian tube somewhere, she is, has been told and grown up and heard from pro-life advocates as well that abortion is not really good unless it saves you. She has not heard that many, if not most, pregnancies in her situation can be looked after and brought to term. That there is medical help that doesn't involve scraping the baby out so you can try again. The other thing that I'm thinking about is if you're having sex with someone you love, with someone you want to raise children with, and you find out that you're pregnant, at six weeks, you're not rushing around trying to figure out whether or not, you know, I, I, you know I've been through this. At six weeks, you're not rushing around trying to figure out whether or not the baby's in your fallopian tube or not. You're usually not even gonna see an ultrasound until really, really 19, 18, 17, maybe, maybe earlier if you're just kind of worried about something. But you're not gonna go get ultrasounds and studies done in six weeks. Now, if something is seriously, seriously wrong and you go in and you do get a study done and you check out your um, pregnancy and where, it's, where it all is taking place and everything and you find out there's something problem, if you're with someone you love that you've been having sex with and you wanna have children with, you're going to see that child in your womb as your child. And rather than go to an abortionist to have them scrape them into bits and remove them to maybe save your life or whatever, you're going to do everything you can to love them and protect them and heal them and help them. You're gonna be reading books. You're gonna be like watching how you walk and sleep and eat and all this kind of stuff because you love your baby and you don't wanna abort them. So. These are things that I've learned. We need to stop saying life of the mother in our campaigns. People are seizing it and they're using it. Everyone tells us at the abortion mill that they had to do so because of rape and the life of the mother. They're lying. They're people who want to kill their children. And they're also being just totally evil people towards the people who actually were raped and the people who actually are facing serious medical situations. Those people don't usually kill their babies and um, usually if their babies die, they mourn their loss. 
things that I've thought about today from just being at the abortion mill.